What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for a recap of what went down on Teen Mom OG Season 8, Episode 11. Full disclosure, I need a glass of wine to get through it. Just because, number one, Teen Mom OG is so boring. I cannot even tell you. Like, my favorite part of the season, actually, is finding out that we only have, like, one episode left. You know, that's how boring it is. And number two, it literally is just one of those weeks where you're just like, ugh. Anyway, the episode seems to almost completely revolve around Ryder's little temper tantrums. I feel like maybe um, she was in a lot of pain because, you know, herself and her mother had to carry the entire season of the show on their damn backs themselves. So um, there was a scene of Cheyenne and Matt trying to deal with her, you know, having her little meltdown, running around screaming, and it just reminded me of why me, at this young age without children, why I don't date men with kids. Like, this was just more than enough for me. So Caitlin and Tyler want to visit Carly with cameras of course knowing that uh, Brandon and Teresa are not interested in turning Carly's life into a media circus and so they're in the kitchen of their home with Caitlin's dad and Caitlin's dad you know just arrogantly says oh Brandon and Teresa should you know be used to the whole camera thing by now well no Brandon and Teresa don't have to be used to the whole camera thing by now because they're not employees of Viacom shooting a television show so it's not their job to be comfortable with it in fact it's Caitlin and Tyler, who like 10 years later, should be used to the fact that these two don't want their child on camera. Caitlin and Tyler, of course, complain about like the restriction. They're like, oh, Brandon and Teresa are not allowing us to show this on air. And it's just, it really sucks because what we do is we live our whole entire authentic lives on television. And this is a big part of our lives. Like we want to be open about every aspect of our lives, which is a complete and utter lie because earlier this season slash late last season, when, you know, Tyler was telling us about how repulsed he was by his wife, um, they decided to go and seek couples therapy. Remember when they were about to divorce? And so they go to a therapy class and then they come back in the kitchen and Caitlin tells the producer that they do not intend to discuss their marital issues on the show anymore. So clearly they are not 100% showing every aspect of their lives. So they need to stop pretending that they're 100,000% transparent and that Brandon and Teresa are ruining that for them because it's simply not true. Towards the end of the scene, Tyler makes a really insidious comment that rubbed me the wrong way because I feel like it's the millionth time that he and Kate have almost kind of like slapped Brandon and Teresa in the, fa in the face with their infertility. He was like, I don't know if they're keeping Carly away from television to protect her or if they're doing this to be controlling due to some kind of underlying jealousy. And that jealousy very obviously that he's kind of like intimating is that they're jealous that um, the two of them are Carly's biological parents. And this, they do this all the time. You know, every time they get upset with Brennan and Teresa, they start to insult their parenting. Um, and then they kind of insult their infertility as well. And I just feel like that's really, really cruel of them to do. Meanwhile, down south, Mackenzie claims that her fitness DVD business is her family's main source of income, which is a bit concerning to hear because I doubt it is pulling in all that much. And if that is the bread and butter of your family, then I don't think that Josh, who already has like, what, three and a half, four brain cells up there, should be riding around on these, um, um, bulls, you know, because it's just a dangerous line of work. And if it's not bringing in that much money, then he should be doing something else. They are really laying it on thick with the whole Josh is a cheater or neglectful like husband storyline, like two episodes in and we already are at another crossroads here. So Mackenzie tells us that Josh said he was going to do something like with the lawn or whatever. And um, she's been trying to reach him for a while so that she can go to the gym or whatever. And um, so she tries to call him and he has not been picking up all day. And so she vents about it in front of her children, which obviously upsets them. They start getting like moody and fussy. And I'm like, girl, you're not supposed to complain about the father of your child in front of your children. How many times do these girls have to make this mistake? It's not smart at all to do this. Your kids are not your friends, you know, like go vent to your friends. Let your kids just be kids. Meanwhile, in Indiana, Amber is sitting around in Indiana at home with her Andrew. And uh, she seems kind of upset, like, you know, like agitated about the fact that he and baby James are playing with bubbles and I swear this is only like the second time we've seen her make physical contact with this infant all season and it was just her going to snatch a cup out of his hand. I mean seriously you guys when have we ever seen Amber holding cuddling this baby? Don't worry I'll wait. 
it would not be a scene about baby James if we did not have Amber complaining about him. She complains that he fussed all night so she did not get to sleep a full night. And it's like, girl, we already know you don't get up with this child. So what are you even complaining about? Like if anything, Andrew should be complaining because he's the only one in that household parenting this child. Meanwhile, in Tennessee, Macy and Taylor are truly showing how dull they are without getting to lean on Ryan's addiction for a storyline. We get yet another episode centered around their reproductive organs and Taylor seems really immature about vasectomies. It's almost like he thinks like you lose your manhood, you get castrated, your voice goes high pitched or something when you get a damn vasectomy. Like I was a little bit like, really dude, how old are you here? Over in LA, Cheyenne decides that Matt hasn't gotten enough time around Ryder and so she decides to set up a romantic weekend for the two of them and more time for him to be around Ryder by going to a vineyard which I think is a really dumb idea. So they get to the vineyard, they feed ostriches with Ryder for a little bit and so I guess in Cheyenne's mind that was enough of a like energy drain for Ryder to peacefully sit around while she and Matt tasted wines for the next like hour, hour and a half or something like that you know as a two-year-old and obviously it did not go according to plan like Ryder was just, you know, it was a whole new environment. Again, she's two years old, so of course she wanted to explore everything, run around. The sommelier did not really get a chance to show them anything because of the distraction. It was just so crazy to me because Cheyenne always has that one sister with her, the one with the name on layaway, and the one day where it would have been perfect to have her as a nanny for Ryder, she doesn't bring her, right? And so the whole entire day kind of goes to S-H-I-T. The camera also caught Matt quite a few times looking really fr uh, flustered and frustrated and irritated with the whole thing. Maybe he caught, you know, my allergy of dating people with kids at that point. Macy brings Taylor to her OBGYN to discuss, you know, which surgery is more intense, getting her tubes tied or him getting a vasectomy. And of course, her doctor tells him the common sense thing. Getting your tubes tied is a lot more of an invasive, like complicated surgery. And I just continue to get more and more frustrated with Taylor as the episode progressed. Literally, your wife has been telling you for how long now that she is not going to have another kid? Like, what more do you want? Like, all of these other kids that you wanna have, who are you gonna have them with if it's not your damn wife? Like, listen to her, she's already had three kids. She's dealing with PCOS. She even tried to compromise with him by telling him, like, listen, we can get your sperm frozen, you know? So if we change our mind down the road, we can still have more babies. And he still was not down for that. And I was like, you know what? Men, I swear to God, men. Back to Mackenzie McKee again. She takes her kids with her to drop in on Josh at the gym and she criticizes him in front of them yet again, going as far as calling him a D-I-C-K. I am telling you, these people are so dim. Um, then she goes to his car while the kids are in hers and scolds him outside where they could very clearly hear the argument. Josh gets sick of being chastised, so he drives away in his truck, er, I mean in her truck, because in a fit of rage, she's like, oh wow, look at how he treats his wife his wife who financially supports him, the wife who bought that truck he's driving away on. Damn. I do have to say that I really feel bad for Mackenzie because Josh sounds like an absolute nightmare to be married to, like seriously. Back at the vineyard again, I felt so bad for Matt because Ryder was on her third tantrum. The poor girl was so tired, I guess. Um, it's so awkward when it's not your kid because you can't be like, get your little butt over here or whatever, you know what I mean? So like he just had to stand there and Cheyenne was packing instead of like tending to Ryder at the time I was like oh my god like I get it dude the three of them then go out for lunch and she asks him when he plans to have children and he tells her that he was always hoping to have children in his early 30s which I was like yes great answer great answer you don't see that on the show and I was really you know happy to see that and so she when she gets pissed off at you she gives you dirty looks and like seems to do the whole silent treatment thing so she's like oh early 30s, like what the heck? Like I've always said that when Ryder turns two, I'm gonna have a baby with whoever's around at the time. And I was like, you nasty ass chick, really? Like why would you first of all think that? Second of all, why would you say that on national freaking television? Like that is literally disgusting that you were thinking seriously 
of having a child with any Tom, Dick, and Harry just because your child turned two years old and you want children to be close in age. It is just so dysfunctional and irresponsible. Sis, you don't even have a stable job. Like, what are you doing? You live with your sister and her kid. Um, you're on MTV and in my Tyler's mom, Kim voice, no offense, MTV, but this ain't it. It is just so irresponsible. And Matt's face seemed to like say the same thing. He was like, really? Like, you were gonna have a kid with anybody just because your child turned two? Cheyenne picking up on his discomfort, tried to assure him that she would not trap him with a baby, but we all know that is a lie. Um, I really do have to say, you guys, Cheyenne, like, I'm disappointed. Like, I feel like she's the, the light of this show because she's the only person with a non-super depressing storyline, but she's just so irresponsible and rushing the hell out of this relationship, and it's making me extremely uncomfortable. Back up north in Indiana, Amber and Andrew are going for a drive, and I'm gonna set the scene for you. So they're going for a drive, and she's telling him about how she's always, like, really agitated for kind of no real reason, just because of her mental health issues and so she you know takes her little machete tucks it away and she tells him about her dream she's like you know I've always I've always wanted people to think of me as dainty <laughs> and so Andrew's like then why don't you be dainty damn and she flips her freaking lid and I gagged um, and so she's like come on you're not even freaking listening to me what are you talking about and he just keeps egging her on and I've always kind of been on Andrew's side whenever she has these little meltdowns but I do have to say though that this time I would bet $100 he was purposely agitating her you know just to get a reaction and he kept smirking as he was doing it and it just kept getting worse and worse it even went as far as her kind of being like look at how like low those planes are flying they're flying so freaking low they shouldn't be doing that and so he just makes all these dumb comments instead of just like letting her kind of talk about it and it just blew up in the car wow we finally get a scene of ryan and mackenzie having a really casual conversation about potentially having more kids by accident in the future and the conversation skeeved me out so bad because this is a heroin addict right allegedly and this is a woman who's already like got like what two young kids that she's raising kind of by herself because of his you know ad addiction allegedly and they're still living in his parents house as well so like man like all of these teen mom people are so like reproductively ignorant like it hurts all right you guys we are just about at the finish line I feel like I've been rambling forever okay so now um, Josh and Mackenzie Josh decides to apologize to Mackenzie so he comes to the gym that she was working out at and apologizes for just you know going MIA on her not answering the calls all day he claims it was because he was working so hard or his phone was off or something like that I forgot what it was but it was a really lame excuse and she decides to just be the bigger person and accept his apology and I feel like she puts up with way too freaking much and now in the final scene of the episode amber goes to visit her psychiatrist to complain about not getting enough sleep collective freaking eye roll and um she claims that the lack of sleep is causing everything to enrage her but that is just who she is we've known her for like 10 years that is just who amber is anything enrages her and i don't think a lack of sleep is really driving that she said that she really didn't know what to do with andrew anymore she's like i understand like on an intellectual level that like his little comments and stuff are meant to make me laugh kind of like lighten me up like make me a little bit happier or something like that but like just my my instant reaction to them is rage like all the time and so the psychiatrist is like you know that's just a symptom like I understand blah 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 and she's like I feel like I'm a ticking time bomb about to go off I'm like teetering on the edge and this is like the first time where she actually cries with real tears because if you remember when she was talking to her psychiatrist like earlier in the season she did the whole oh I feel like a monster I just want to be right I want this to be a cure and cry with no tears coming out for a solid five minutes but this time she actually cried so I really did believe her and it just was a complete omen because not that long after she wound up you know allegedly attacking Andrew while he was holding their child so it's really crazy to watch the per you know the progression to get there anyway you guys that does it your recap of what went down on Teen Mom OG season 8 episode 11 now as usual I'm more excited to hear what you have to say about everything so please make sure to leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and we'll chat by the way thank you so much for 80,000 freaking subscribers I can't believe we made it this far that's all for now thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time